accused of killing Kate and Markham more than a decade ago, faced a judge for the first time this morning. John Carter was Markham's fiance back in 2011. Today, he entered a plea of not guilty for her murder. The judge also presented disturbing writings found inside his former home. Legal analyst Mike Allen joins us now. Let's first talk about how harmful these writings are to him in terms of his defense. It seemed like there's kind of an internal struggle there, right? Sure does, and they're chilling too when you hear them. And I understand why the prosecutor, Mike Moser, read them in court. Um, I think it's gonna be strong evidence for the prosecutor. And I'm sure you would agree with Mike when you listen to this. So t listen to this. So it says, deep down, I wanna kill her, but I love her. Mike Moser also said in court today, I want to slit her wrist. How do you keep talking me into all these things? I'm just that good, but you're bad. I don't know. How do I kill you? You can't. You're right about what? Nothing. And Moser says it doesn't end there. And that's pretty bad. That's right. It is. And also, I don't know if you know, Rob, the forensic anthropologist said that she had wounds on her wrist. So there were three or four sharp blunt force trauma to her wrist bones. Right. What does that mean, do you think? Well, I mean, you pick up from what he's uh, writing there, so there could be a connection there. I mean, either way, it's awful damning, and I don't know how he's gonna explain it away. Is, is he just that arrogant, or is he just that stupid? These books were probably written before she was killed right. in 2011, and it's still at his mother's house. I, what do you make of that? You know what, I've given up years ago trying to figure these yeah. people out, whether it's stupidity or, or you know, a dare or something like that. But uh, that's good, solid evidence, obviously, for the prosecutor. Do you worry that it could be planted? Not really. No. Uh, I mean, he may put that forward as a defense, but it sure doesn't sound like it. But you'd think he'd be smart enough to get rid of it. Correct. Do you think he just felt like he just got away with it if he indeed is guilty? Yeah, it, it seems like that might be the case, yeah, that he thought he could put one by him. Yeah, okay, so we're not naming names here, but he ended up getting married mm -hmm. to a woman who was kind of in their social circle. They now have a kid together. How does that play into it? Or as a prosecutor, would you even bring that up in, in court? I don't see what the relevancy okay. would be particularly, but obviously the prosecutor knows a heck of a lot more than we do. Yeah, Mike Moser's got a lot more evidence than he let out today. I mean, he's a good, experienced prosecutor. I think he let the, the, uh, the readings out because he wanted a high bond and he sure. got it. What would you, okay, so he, he's coming back into court on April 4th, right? right? Which is a week from tomorrow. If you were advising him, what's the first thing you would tell him before that court appearance? Not to say anything more, I, I don't know if he's spoken to the cops yet, just to kind of hold his horses, let the discovery process take, take hold and see what happens. Maybe it'll end up in a plea, maybe it'll go to trial, but it's still real early on. All right, uh, our chief legal analyst, Mike Allen. Mike, thank you very much. My pleasure.